Hello Year 10, welcome to lesson two of coasts. This lesson will all be about coastal landforms, that's erosional landforms and depositional landforms. For this lesson you're going to need pen, paper and pencil. Your first activity is our quick fire round. So this is where we would like you to pause the video and have a go at these five questions that are knowledge questions from lesson one. Before we start looking at what these depositional and um, erosional landforms are, it's important that we understand the geology of the UK first. So this map here shows you an outline of the UK and you can also see that there are lots and lots of different types of rock that make up the UK. So the outline looks as if it is fixed and permanent. This is what we see on all of our maps. But in reality, beaches and estuaries are a constantly changing environment as the tide moves in and out. So even solid cliffs can suddenly collapse. Young sedimentary rock, such as sand, silt and clay, has not been compacted and that means it is less resistant to erosion. Therefore, it's easier to erode. So wherever you see those types of rocks, and we see that quite a lot in Yorkshire and in Norfolk, these areas are vulnerable to erosion. So we saw in the previous slide that the UK is made up of lots of different types of rock. So where the coastline is formed from alternating bands of hard and soft rock, like you can see here in this diagram, destructive waves will erode the soft rock to create bays and coves. And the more resistant hard rock will jut out into the sea to form the headlands. So your bays in this diagram is Swanage Bay and Studland Bay and your headlands are Durlston Head and Ballard Point. So we have seen that young sedimentary rock has a weak structure which makes it vulnerable to erosion. But in contrast, older sedimentary rock is compacted and consolidated which means it's much more resistant to erosion. Limestone coastlines tend to form almost vertical cliffs. However, the bedding planes and joints in the rocks are lines of weakness in those cliffs. And these lines are more easily eroded than the massive blocks of stones between them. So erosion along these lines can lead to the formation of caves and arches, stacks and stumps. So if we take a look at the diagram, you can see there that at number one, there would have been a joint or a fault in that resistant rock. And through time, the process of hydraulic action has blasted open that crack, forcing it to be a small opening. At number two, this small opening becomes bigger and bigger through the processes of abrasion and hydraulic action, widening it to form a cave. And at four, we can see that those continuous erosional processes have punched their way through the headland, forming a natural arch. At five, you can see that the top of the headland would have been too heavy and it's therefore collapsed. And six and seven, we can see there, there is a tall stack left behind and eventually that collapses to form a stump. So there is not only the waves that are eroding through the processes of hydraulic action and abrasion, but there is also biological weathering, which is happening to the top of the cliff. And you can see there all of the grasses and the plants that would have been breaking up the headland as well through the root systems. If you pause the video here, Try and write a description of how these cliffs change over time. Try to include the key features, caves, arch, stacks and stumps, but also naming those key erosional processes as well, like hydraulic action. Have a look at the red arrow and see if you can understand this idea of 
cliff retreat and see if you can include that in your description as well. We all have our own idea of what a perfect beach is. Maybe yours is a, a gently sloping white sandy one so that you can walk into the sea without stubbing toes or one with builders and rocks and rock pools. Whatever your ideal beach is, they've all been created as a result of the processes of erosion, transportation and deposition. So this is the material forming a beach may have been eroded from a cliff or removed from a beach somewhere else. And waves can transport the eroded material by longshore drift and then deposit it. Constructive waves deposit the material when they break on the shore in a sheltered bay because they run out of energy. The backwash is weak and sand and pebbles are left behind to form the beaches like you can see here in the photo. Storm waves throw pebbles and sand as far as possible up the beach. This may form a ridge above the high tide mark. Although we think of beaches as permanent features, in fact they're temporary and often change every day. Beaches can be mainly made up of sand and sandy beaches tend to be flat. Strong onshore winds can also blow sand inland to form sand dunes at the back of the beach, like the ones that we see at Hunstanton. They're held in place by marram grass, which is a coarse grass that helps to stabilise them and stop them from moving. Pause the video here and see if you can answer the question, why are beaches formed by constructive waves? So the main way that sediment is transported is by longshore drift and this happens when waves break at an angle to the coast rather than parallel to it. Because prevailing winds are mostly from one direction, longshore drift is usually in one direction too. Longshore drift transports the sediment along the coastline. When rocks are eroded creating sediment, it will first be deposited very close to where it eroded, in a partly sheltered area such as a cove or a bay, and a beach will form because the sediment is trapped in the bay. But other features will also form like we can see here. Spits are long narrow ridges of sand and shingle stretching out from the coast. They form where longshore drift moves sediment along the coast in the same direction as the prevailing wind. When the coastline changes direction, such as at the mouth of a river, the sediment is then deposited as a long ridge, which stretches away from the coast to form a spit. Many spits develop a hooked or recurved end. This is caused by the wind and waves changing direction. Sand dunes are usually found on this hook. Behind the spit, a sheltered area of saltwater marshes and mud flat forms, which is covered by the sea at high tide. You can see a spit here in the, on the slide, Hurst Castle Spit in Hampshire. Another depositional feature is bars. Bars are narrow ridges of sand and shingle that grow across a bay as a result of longshore drift. They can trap shallow lakes called lagoons behind them. Lagoons don't last forever and may eventually fill up with sediment. Storm waves sometimes crash over the top or break through a bar. Lastly, another feature, which is quite an unusual one, is called a tombolo. These can form when a beach grows out to meet an island just offshore. This is often produced when two longshore drift currents from different directions meet. If you pause the video here, research a photo of a tombolo and then outline the main differences between tombolo, spits and bars. Some of our UK coastlines are really vulnerable to erosion, especially those around the North Sea. In the East Riding areas of Yorkshire, and on the North Norfolk coastlines, cliffs are retreating at an average of two metres per year. And this is due to the different geology. 
So the cliffs in North Norfolk are made up of layers of sand, silt and clay deposited at the end of the Ice Age. And those young sedimentary rocks, as we've already said, has not been compacted as much as the older rocks. And this means that the young sedimentary rocks are much more vulnerable to erosion. So the cliffs at Haysborough in Norfolk are not very resistant to erosion by waves because they are young sedimentary rocks. Once the slopes have been eroded by the sea, the whole slopes can become unstable. It is then at risk of mass movement, a process by which the whole cliff face can slide or slump onto a beach. The chance of slumping is increased by periods of heavy rain, which adds mass to the cliff. And rainwater also erodes small V-shaped notches called gullies into the upper slopes of cliffs. After the 1953 storm surge, a lot of money was spent building a better coastline defence along the North Sea coast, including Haysborough. However, the erosion here has continued and a succession of coastal defences has failed to protect the village at the top of the cliff. Pause the video here and make a list of how Haysborough coastline has changed over time. Well done Year 10, you've now reached the end of Lesson 2, Coastal Landforms. So what we would like you to do now is refer back to your fact booklet and make sure you've learnt and remembered all four facts from this lesson. This lesson is mainly concentrated on erosional processes, transport and depositional processes and vulnerable coastlines. We've only touched a little bit with our ideas about groins, for example, on human interaction but we will cover more of this in the following lessons.